Welcome to my classroom. I am Nestle. I am starting a series of videos about the basics of electrocardiography. Electrocardiography may look complicated and difficult to understand at the beginning. I request you to keep on watching the new videos and accumulate the information. We are going to solve all the difficult points one by one together. So let us start. One important thing that we need to know about electrocardiography is that the heart is three-dimensional and the electrical activity spreads in three dimensions in the heart. However, electrocardiography reflects this electrical activity only in two dimensions. This is like taking the photograph of a three-dimensional object. Uh, one single photograph can only reflect two dimensions of a three-dimensional object. And if you want to understand the three dimensions, we need to take more than one photographs. For example, if you take a photograph of my head from the front, my nose will look like a point. If you take a photograph from the behind, you will see no nose at all. But if you have take a photograph from the side, you will have a better idea about the size and length of my nose. Electrocardiography is also like this. Uh, each electrocardiography recording is made by one positive electrode and this each electrocardiography recording reflects the electrocardiography activity in the heart in, in two dimensions. So uh, to be able to understand the electrical activity in three dimensions we need to take more than one photographs. We need to take more than one electrocardiography recordings. For this purpose we place uh, in classical electrocardiography, we place 12 electrodes at different angles around the heart, each of which make a two-dimensional recording. So from all of these 12 two-dimensional recordings, we try to understand the three-dimensional spread of the electrical activity in the heart. We can take many photographs of a three-dimensional object from different angles, but after all, all of these photographs will belong to just one three-dimensional object. Electrocardiography is like this. Uh, there is a single heart and there's a single electrical activity spreading in three dimensions in the heart, and electrocardiography is representing this in two dimensions and we have 12 electrocardiography recordings made by 12 positive electrocardiography uh, electrodes from the same heart and from the same electrical activity. You see here D1, D2, D3, AVR, AVL, AVF, six of them, and the other six are V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. They all represent the same electrical activity. So when the electrical activity starts, D1 starts here, D2 starts here, D3 starts here. All of them start recording at the same time. But you can see that the figures are different in each of them. This is because electrodes in each of them are placed at a different position. They are looking at the heart from a different position. So the 12 led electrocardiography gives us 12 two-dimensional representations of the recordings of the electrical activity. What we need to do is we have to put these two-dimensional 12 recordings to understand the three-dimensional electrical activity in the heart. Electrical activity in the heart spreads with a certain timing and with a certain sequence. So looking at the electrocardiography, we try to understand if in this heart, the electrical activity is happening with the, same, with the um, proper timing and proper sequence. Another very important point about electrocardiography is that electrocardiography gives us information only about the electrical activity of the heart. In the heart, electrical activity is followed by a mechanical activity as the heart contracts. But the electrocardiography gives us no information about the force 
of contraction. On the other hand, electrocardiography gives us information about the mass of muscle in the heart. If an area of the heart hypertrophies, this is going to contribute more to the dipole. It's going to produce a bigger dipole and which will be reflected to the electrocardiography with bigger electrocardiography waves. However, having a hypertrophic heart does not mean that the heart is going to supply the body with sufficient amounts of blood. For example, there may be left ventricular hypertrophy visible in the electrocardiography, but this does not mean that the left ventricle is sending enough amount of blood to our body. The person may have a cardiac insufficiency. Simply by looking at the electrocardiography, we cannot eliminate uh, cardiac insufficiency. We cannot say that the patient has or does not have uh, cardiac insufficiency. On the other hand, normal healthy people may have electrocardiography recordings with non-specific changes. So, putting all this information together, we need to interpret the electrocardiography of a patient together with the complaints and the clinical findings of the patient. So, what does electrocardiography reflect? Any condition that changes the electrical activity in the heart will be reflected in the electrocardiography. So, what are they? Atrial and ventricular hypertrophies, myocardial ischemia and infarction, Arrhythmias, pericarditis can cause changes in electrocardiography. Some drugs have effects on electrical activity and therefore the electrocardiography, digitalis drugs like digoxin, antimalarial like kinin are classical examples of this. Um, in addition to all of these, electrolyte abnormalities of potassium and calcium will also be reflected in an electrocardiography. However, if you are going to think about force of contraction, you need to understand that electrocardiography does not give us any information about the force of contraction. So we have started a series of videos. Uh, this is the end of video number one. I hope we will meet in the next video. Thank you for watching.